what's going on YouTube and welcome back to all my cloud scholars out there. Uh, my name is Kieran Tross and this is the Microsoft Certified Cybersecurity Architect Expert uh, course uh, for the SC100. This is going to be a free course on YouTube. Um, I'm doing this because I did got so much feedback with one of the other courses I did online. Uh, YouTube was for Octa course and I thought to myself, you know, I've had some people reach out to me and ask about the SC100. Is it um, a certification that's worthwhile taken? And I, I absolutely do believe so. It, it's really one of the certifications that doesn't fall into one of those silos. You know, so if you did like an AZ-500 or if you do one of the other courses, like an identity management course, uh, so a certification, those courses tend to have a general, uh, a general or specific uh, focus, which I don't think that's a bad thing. Sometimes you need to focus and zoom in. Uh, but when you're learning uh, Microsoft uh, technologies and you start getting understanding the ecosystem, the SC100 really spans across the ecosystem. It really gives you understanding of how all these different services work and then also, you know, when to use which service. And sometimes you can use, you know, two services to, to uh, complete a task. But um, which one is going to be uh, better for you in order for you to uh, successfully complete the task that you are trying to complete? So um, just a little bit about me. Um, I have about almost 20 years in IT experience. I think I'm at year 19 right now. Um, and some of the positions I've held are a computer specialist where I first started off as on a trading floor, uh, IT support engineer, uh, senior IT support engineer, IT manager. So the senior IT support engineer was promotion. Uh, then IT manager, then I was promoted to manager of information systems. Uh, then I was promoted to IT director where I was overseeing uh, three hospitals, medical practices, IT managers, so on and so forth. Uh, then I left that company and started working as an IM cybersecurity consultant, cloud solutions architect, and then a senior cloud security architect. And I am missing one thing there, which is a di director of uh, uh, cloud technology, and that was for a startup company. I did that for about two years. All right, so you're probably thinking to yourself, all right, you heard about you, your you know, work experience, but you know, what kind of certifications do you have? So if you look at the screen, there's quite a few here. We have the Microsoft Certified Azure Solutions Architect Expert, uh, DevOps Engineer Professional, Cybersecurity Architect Expert, the SC100, which we are going to go through with this course. Azure Administrator is one of the first ones I got. Um, I do have, I did have some AWS certifications as well, but those ones expired. I didn't bother to retake it. And then you see all the way down there, we have HashiCorp, Okta, then also a Google certification. Okay, so now let's get to some stuff that's more important to you all. Uh, here is the course overview. So what is SC100? So the SC100 is a Microsoft expert level cybersecurity certification designed for those who want to lead security strategy, design architecture, and align security operations across the enterprise. Remember earlier, I did mention that this is one of those certifications that is uh, spans the Microsoft ecosystem. So it's a really good certification to you for you to get a really good understanding of what services that you should use for specific scenarios. Um, we also have the, uh, we'll cover what the exam entails, prerequisites you should be aware of, and who the certification is really for. So Microsoft doesn't really have any formal prerequisites. Uh, they kind of did away with that. At one point you had to get one cert, you know, in order for you to get the professional or expert certification. They're not really going about that. I think they're kind of following what AWS does or Amazon does because they don't really have that either. I think Microsoft just started doing this, to be honest with you, I think over the last year or two. Um, but they are saying that certain certifications are recommended. Uh, so that's the SC200 Security Operations Analyst Associate. Then there's the Identity and Access Administrator Associate, which that's a really good one as well. Uh, identities is in everything. So if you are looking to get into any type of cybersecurity role or you're in the cybersecurity role and trying to figure out, you know, which route do I go? You cannot go wrong with identities because, you know, if you think of where people get hacked, uh, it's your identities. You know, that is the area where, you know, you need to make sure you have MFA and all that login uh, being tied back to some type of Splunk or some system to make sure that you are keeping and managing who has access to your Azure tenant or 365. Um, and then we have the AZ500 Azure Security Engineer Associate, which is another good one, but that one's more focused on the security side of uh, Azure. 
and I have that certification as well. Okay, so skill measure. So this is how the test really uh, works out. Uh, so, so design solutions that align with security best practice and priorities is about 20 to 25% of the course. Um, not the course, but really the um, certification, right? Those are the questions. Design, security, operations, identity, and compliance capabilities. There's that word identity again. Then there's the design security solutions for infrastructure. You know, that how would you build out your infrastructure? What resources would you use? Things of that nature. And then design security solutions for application and data as well. How, you do, how would you now be able to secure your applications and data uh, with the Microsoft uh, different solutions that they have? Okay, so when it comes to exam details, pass and score is a 700 out of 1,000. Format is multiple choice, case studies, and scenario-based questions. You know, um, approximately $165, uh, so that's the price. Now, sometimes you can get a voucher or you can, you know, perhaps, you know, some course or some organization may begin giving out certain vouchers. They sometimes do that. Uh, if you go, if you kind of, it's a good thing to kind of go on LinkedIn and reach out to individuals who are in the field, I would definitely recommend you doing that. If you all send me an invite on LinkedIn, I would definitely accept and say, hey, I've been taking your course on YouTube and I'm just taking your advice um, and just you know trying to connect with more individuals because individuals, especially those that work at Microsoft, they tend to send out you know free vouchers and how you can now take the test and save yourself some money. So just keep in mind that 165 is really for US. I am in the US. Um, if you are outside the U.S., then that course is going to change. Um, and then uh, how you can take your test is uh, it's available online and at Certified Test Centers through Pearson View. So I did do a Pearson View and went online, excuse me, went physically to the location to take the test. Now, this was probably over 10 years ago when I was doing my AWS certifications. I had done the AWS Security Specialty Certification, uh, passed it, but... Um, you don't necessarily need to do that. You can be in the comfort of your home. You just, you know, basically you'll sign up for the Pearson View. You'll get the Pearson View app on your, your laptop. And that app is going to make sure you close out every other application on your laptop. You know, so you'll have one application open. You'll have to show your screen. You'll have to show your uh, camera would need to be on. Uh, and you would have to lift up your laptop and show your room. You can't have any paper or anything on your desk when you are taking this test. So just make sure if you have kids or if, you know family, if you live with anybody, your family, please let them know, hey, for the next hour and a half, do not stop and open this door. Do not come into this room because if anybody does show up, even if they're just showing up saying, oh, so my bad, you are going to be, you know, canceled out of the, that test and you're, you know, you're there, you're going to have to forfeit the money. So they are very strict on that. Um, and even if you are one of those people that talk to yourself when you're reading or you talk out loud, I would suggest you try not to do that on the test because I did that at one point where I was reading the question and I was kind of like, mm, I'm not really sure it could go two different ways. And what happened was they messaged me and said, hey, can you please stop talking because we're going to, you know, uh, cancel you out of the course, out of your exam. And what they're trying to do is stop people from, you know, using certain devices to speak about a question and then have somebody on the other end you know, Google it and figure out the answer. So that's what they're really trying to prevent. So just a heads up. So there is a retake policy. If you don't pass on the first attempt, you must wait 24 hours to retake. After the second attempt, there is a 14 day wait period between tries. Okay, study strategy. Okay, in this course, I'll share the exact study methods that help me pass and insights I've learned from other successful candidates. This includes building a study schedule that works, prioritize and Microsoft have learned, exam guides, lab practice, and supplementing with real world scenarios and architectural diagrams. Okay, so the thing about study strategy, I have talked about this before, uh, one of my other courses, uh, some videos where I talk about, you know, certification that you should take, and I talk about studying. My thing is this, I do an hour a day. You can put down the social media, get off Netflix or whatever you're on, and literally just, you know, uh, invest in yourself. So, do an hour a day definitely works. Sometimes you may be able to push it to two hours a day. And I would always suggest to people to get a lab environment. Microsoft, it's $200 for a free lab environment. Uh, they give you $200 credit, excuse me. You have to put your credit card in because after the $200, they're going to want their money. What I always suggest to people is get a Microsoft tenant. It's absolutely easy to do. Once you have your Microsoft tenant, 
the next step what you're going to do is learn how to create a budget because now you can put a budget so that this way if you you know spend you want to say okay i only want to spend the max is 25 dollars that is very easily obtainable i have videos talk about how you could create a budget in microsoft azure and i would definitely suggest that you create a budget for your environment because it is very easy for you to spin up a resource and leave it running and forget about it, especially if it's late at night and you put the kids to sleep or you're finished with work or whatever, you may not have kids, and you're at 10 o'clock at night, you're working on what you're doing, and then it's 11.30, you're tired at this point. All you wanna do is go to sleep, and all of a sudden you have that resource running for a day or two days. Now, guess what happens? Now you're gonna just be feeding Microsoft way more money than what you want. So definitely create a budget so that's where you can get an email. And I have a video talking about how to create a budget, walks you through creating a budget and doing a forecast as well. So that's what it comes to the study strategy. I definitely recommend you do an hour a day. And if you could bump it up to two hours then definitely do so. Okay, so let's say you wrap up this, this course, you take the exam, you pass, that is great. But it's not only just about passing the test, this is also about now becoming an expert, right? It's thinking holistically across identity, compliance, data, and threat protection, uh, being able to collaborate with stakeholders across IT and business, and be able to communicate, articulate what you are trying to do or why you feel like they should do X instead of Y is very important because you are going to be in meetings, you know, if you are not in cybersecurity already, but you're going to be in meetings with individuals who do not have the same knowledge as you. So you really need to make sure you, you, you drive your point across to them. And the only way you'd be able to successfully do that is really understand these systems and don't just look at it from a technical aspect, but also how do I communicate this, uh, what I'm learning. Um, and then you also have like lead zero trust adoption. And then at the end there, the last bullet point is whether you're looking to land a new role, advance into leadership or become the go-to strategist on your team, SC100 can definitely open up doors for you. So that is it for the introduction of the SC100. Uh, please continue to watch. Um, if you haven't done so already, please smash that like and subscribe button. Um, I am always looking to hear from you all, so please leave a comment. Uh, please leave me a, something in the comment section. I am definitely, uh, I definitely try to respond within uh, 24 hours. I think I'm averaging about 10 hours. But, you know, definitely let me know exactly what you're thinking of and how you like this course. I'm just interested to hear about that. So, um, as I said before, this is not just about the exam, it's beyond the exam. And, you know, my motto is, uh, my job here at Cloud Scholars is to get you from scholar to consultant and, of course, consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time.